Well, here we are on Thursday, July 9th, the first Thursday we could do Bible study live at the Red Barn, and nobody's here but me and Troy, and God is always with us. And so we're going to do Bible study anyway, still recorded. My plan had been to have a live Bible study with people here and then to record it afterwards. So in a way, it's a blessing for me because I don't have to or don't get to do it twice. So I'm kind of thankful for that. But at the same time, I would have happily done it twice for a few kids to have come. But you know what? It's so hot out. I'm kind of glad you guys are home because hopefully you're in air conditioning or there's a nice fan in your house and you can stay a little cooler than it is outside because it is hot. Well, let's get started. We're going to have our normal opening prayer and then we'll jump into the actual, I had said I wouldn't finish John without all of us being together, but I think we're going to. I think we're going to go ahead and, and finish the Gospel of John. So if you don't get to watch it, you can always go back and watch it later because it'll be on YouTube and on Instagram. So, well, let's pray to get started. Father God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for the word from the Daily Bible Thought this morning from 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the whole idea of being thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus, for all who belong to Christ Jesus. And God, I really, I, I am thankful that there is an opportunity to use social media to get your word out. I'm thankful for beautiful sunny days. <laughs> We're thankful for the rain yesterday that some of us got, but thank you for your constant presence and that you love us. And I do pray for all the kids that you would help them to want to watch Bible study, to want to read the Bible on their own, and to be thinking and praying and, and spending time with you all the time. And just pray for this Bible study to be what you want it to be. I pray that you'd only allow me to speak the words that you want me to speak. In your name, Jesus, amen. All right. We're ready to get started in John chapter 21. This is new ground, guys. We have never studied this part yet. This is the last chapter of the Gospel of John. So there's a guy out there, you know who you are, that you had said you had in mind the next Gospel for us to study. So you better be coming up with it because I got to start studying. So we'll have three weeks left in the Gospel of John. It'll take three weeks, I think, to do the last chapter. So tonight we start with chapter 21, and the first verse says, later, that means after, because we had, remember the first day Jesus rose from the dead, that Sunday he appeared to his disciples that night, and then eight days later he appeared to the disciples again with Thomas that time, and this is after that. Later Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. I love that. What an opening. You know, John's like, hey, get ready. This is how it happened. So we're going to see how it happened. Sea of Galilee, someplace they would have been very often because they were fishermen, many of them. Verse 2, several of the disciples were there. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. I feel sorry for the two other disciples because they went without being named, but there were two other guys, two other disciples. The sons of Zebedee, do you know who they are? Do you remember their names? Two sons. And if you think about the fact that there's one disciple who never names himself in the book that God inspired him to write, the Gospel of John, it's John and his brother James. James and John were the sons of Zebedee, also called the sons of thunder. And so there's a small group. It's Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. So seven guys hanging out. And you gotta, you gotta think, if you have seven guys hanging out and Peter's in that group, who's gonna lead? Peter's gonna be the one kind of saying what we're gonna do. So verse three, Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. Well, interestingly enough, you know, like I said, that was what he did for a living. Peter and Andrew, his brother, and then James and John were all four fishermen. And so this was normal. And I also think it was kind of like, what else do we do? You know, they 
They'd seen the risen Christ, they knew he'd risen from the dead, but they really weren't really positively sure of what the next steps were. What were they supposed to do next? And so, go fishing. And of course, you have the rest of the disciples that were with him. We'll come to, they all replied, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. Now, we, some of us, have experienced a lock-in or two together where we don't sleep the whole night and it's a lot of fun and we do crazy things. These guys fished all night. I cannot imagine doing that. No, I can imagine fishing maybe for an hour or two, but all night. And this is big time fishing. This is the big boat and they had large nets that they had to cast out on the water and then pull them back in. Now, they fished all night and they used to do this for a living. So they knew what they were doing. It wasn't like they were just novices like I would be. They knew what to do. They knew where to go. They knew how to cast the nets. They knew how to pull them in and when to pull them in, but they caught nothing. You know, it makes me think of that verse this morning, giving thanks in all circumstances. And I think, I'm sure Peter was like, we're not catching anything, you know, and that would be hard to be thankful for. And the fact that they caught nothing was part of God's plan. And that's kind of hard to get in our minds too, but that's part of the being thankful because if God allowed it in our lives, there's a purpose behind it. And so here they are up all night, working hard and nothing to show for it, not one fish. Verse four. At dawn, so this is all night long, the sun's just starting to rise. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. Now, remember we talked about this in Luke, there was another time where Jesus appeared to two men after Jesus had risen from the dead, and they couldn't recognize him until he broke bread, until he wanted them to recognize him. And so the same thing's true in this, I think, even if they had had an up close view of him, they weren't, you know, they knew it was him finally, but it's almost like they couldn't recognize him. They weren't allowed to know it was him. Okay, so they couldn't see. Verse five, he called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. So there's a little bit of an exchange, a little bit of a dialogue there. Verse six, then he said, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you'll get, hold that thought, gotta turn the page, and you'll get some. So they did and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Wow, you know, this is, this is God at work. This is a, a miracle. I mean, it is because it was divine intervention. It's amazing to me though, because if you have read the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter, one moment please, Luke chapter five, gotta put the glasses on to read this part. Luke chapter five has a similar story, but this is from way before, way before, because this is like early on when Jesus was just calling his disciples. but. Jesus tells Peter to put out, and he asked him to put out a little further from the land, and he said, but when he'd finished speaking, he said, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at, but at your word, I will let down the nets. So Peter was at first kind of like, I'm not doing it. You know, we, we worked all night. We didn't catch anything. And here you are asking me to put the nets in the water again out in the deep. So they had so much. Okay, so they caught a ton of fish. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. So one of the first times, one of the first encounters Peter had with Jesus was Jesus telling him to put his net out into the deep water so he could catch some fish, and he did. But Peter at first didn't want him, didn't want to do it. And then after it happened, Peter wanted Jesus to go away. Not because he didn't know who Jesus was, he did. I think Peter got it. But because Peter was ashamed, he's like, I'm a sinful man, I shouldn't even be near you. You know, you shouldn't have anything to do with me. 
So that was early on in the ministry, but here we are after Jesus' resurrection and the same thing's happening again. So they've got this giant amount. They couldn't haul the net in because there were so many fish in it. That's a heavy net. These are strong men. We're gonna find out how strong later, but these are fishermen. They're not wimpy people. They, they had muscles. They could have pulled a lot of stuff in, but not this because it was so full of fish. Verse seven, then the disciple Jesus loved, who's that? Remember, it's John. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped that off for work, jumped into the water and headed to shore. Now, a couple of things from this that really struck me. If you read the book of Acts, like Acts chapter three, you'll see Peter and John together going to the temple at the time of prayer. And so it's really cool to think Peter and John were like buds. They were, they were good friends. They were like best friends, probably like brothers. Well, they were kind of brothers. And so Peter and John were close to each other in the boat, maybe right next to each other, shoulder to shoulder. And John's like, it's the Lord. And Peter's like getting in the water right away. He was so excited. He, that's Peter. So he jumps in the water, kind of like when he was asked by Jesus to walk on water. Peter does not hesitate. He jumps in. He did grab his jacket, grabbed his outside robe and jumped in the water and headed to shore. Okay, verse eight, the others, really having no choice, the others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore for they were only about a hundred yards from shore. So remember there were seven guys. Peter's out of the boat, you know, swimming or wading his way to shore and John and Nathaniel and Tom and two other disciples are on their way with the boat, hauling the net behind them. Verse nine, when they got there to shore, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. I love that. Jesus made breakfast. Jesus cooked for them. He made, he made something that they could eat right away because they'd worked all night. And I just think it's so simple, but it's so special to think about. Jesus wants to meet our needs. Jesus wants to give us the things that we need. And he loves us. He knows what we need. So anyway, he made grilled fish and bread. And I don't know about you, but my favorite way to eat fish is if it's grilled. And so there it was. So verse 10 Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. Now, the operative word for me in that sentence is some. Some. Bring some of the fish. Now, if, if you were going to bring some of something, would you bring all of it? No, you would bring some. And some usually implies just a little, you know, just like an, a sampling. But, okay, so Jesus does clearly state, bring some of the fish you've just caught. Verse 11. <laughs> This is Simon again. Simon Peter. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now, a few things in that. The fact that Peter was able to do this, remember how hard it was for them to even haul it in? Now, it was in the water, and so you're hauling water and fish, which would have made it heavier, but still, 150 big fish. These are large fish, not small fish. And Peter just brings it in himself. So Peter had to be this muscle, muscle man. I mean, he was a strong guy. You don't wanna mess with Peter. And he drags the whole net, not some of the fish. He brought all of the fish. And I have to think, I mean, if Jesus wasn't smiling, I know the other disciples had to be. You know, it's Peter. Peter's going to do more above and beyond. So then the other part of it is the fact that the net didn't tear. Now, I don't know if you guys know a lot about fishing, especially fishing back then. Well, actually fishing today, too, with nets. If you use the same net over and over again, either a large net that you cast or even a small little net that you pull fish up with, it's going to tear. There's going to be parts of it that are going to get ripped eventually. Well, a lot of time would be spent by the fishermen mending their nets. They would you know, secure the knots, make sure it was tight, because if their net was faulty, they could lose fish. There'd be a hole in the net. So 
they would have to make sure they were very careful. And the fact that it didn't tear was unusual because with this large of a catch, usually there'd be a few rips that the net hadn't torn. So another part of the miracle. Verse 12, now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. So again, they might not have recognized him. He might not have been revealed to them, but they knew, they knew it was the Lord. Verse 13, then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. And again, you know, when we think about the John 13, where Jesus washed the disciples' feet, Jesus came to serve. And that's not something we think of very often. We think of Jesus being Lord, and he is, but he said that. If I, being your Lord and teacher and your master, have served you, then you need to do likewise. So he served them breakfast. He, he brought them their food. He acted as a servant. So that would be a challenge tonight to think about how can you help tonight with your home meal? How could you serve? How could you maybe, maybe help fix it? But if not, help set the table or do something to help with serving tonight. Try to make that a priority. Verse 14, this was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. So it's not the last time, but it's the third time. And he was risen on earth for 40 days. So there's 40 days. And you know what? We don't know what happened in every one of those days. I do know that um, Corinthians, Paul talks about how at one point over 500 people witnessed the risen Christ being alive. And so there's a lot of eyewitnesses of Jesus risen self. And that's really interesting to me because a lot of people say, well, there's no proof. Well, there is, and there's very reliable evidence in the gospels and there's four of them. So that's corroborative ev evidence. All right, well, that's, that's it for this chunk of John chapter 21. I really encourage you guys to read it yourself. Find out more about what went on. Think about it, imagine it, picture it in your mind. Picture this giant catch of fish and Peter yanking it out of the boat and pulling all of it on shore so he could bring it to Jesus. And think about being thankful. Be thankful for what God's given you whatever it is, and thank him in all circumstances like the Daily Bible thought this morning. So let's spend some time in prayer and then we're gonna close. But I do pray that, um, you know, we haven't had, I don't think there's been, I'm trying to think if there's been anyone that's reached out after a Bible study to say what they thought or we would love some feedback. I would love some feedback. And, and I do need to know which gospel will be next. So be praying about that or thinking about it and get back with me. But let's pray and then we'll close. So Father God, I thank you so much for this opportunity to study your word. I do pray that someone will watch it and be encouraged. I thank you for this opportunity and I thank you for all circumstances that happen in our lives because we know you're with us always and you plan and purpose things that are better than what we could imagine or even contrive. Please help those who are um, practicing in football or really pray for the football players tonight. I was thinking of that, that a lot of them are out in this heat. I really pray your protection. I pray for those who have to work outside that you would protect them. And we do pray for relief from the heat and we pray for um, relief from COVID. We pray for a solution, a cure and a vaccine and just help us all to stay safe this summer and give kids a lot of fun as they're outside a lot more or swimming, but just please keep them safe. Ask all this in your name, Jesus, amen. All right, so thanks for being here, kind of, for Bible study, and I'll see you next week.